Hello and welcome to another how-to video from Avanza Learning Inc. This time I thought I'd do a brief video on how to apply conditional formatting to a pivot table in such a way that the pivot table retains the conditional formatting even for new items that might be added to the field that is being formatted. I have here on screen some kind of sales data of salespeople that are selling various kinds of products and that has been summarized into a pivot table here on the right. For purposes of simplicity, I have filtered this on one of the products that is the book sets and I have applied conditional formatting to the cells of this one column. And the conditional formatting is expected to highlight the maximum from this group of cells. And this has been applied in the traditional way that you apply conditional formatting. Select the cells and apply the format that you want. So we're going to take a brief test. I'm going to change uh, the sale for one of the salespeople, that is Alex. I'm going to change, I'm going to increase it by 2000 units. So this first record here, which has 198, I'm going to make that 2198. So there we go. And now I'm going to refresh the pivot table. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that the conditional formatting works and now it is Alex's sales that are highlighted. Let's see what happens if new data is added to this pivot table or a new item causes the pivot table to expand. So let's go back to our source data here and I'm going to add a row of data of a salesperson that was previously not there in our data. So I've got some data here. I've got uh, a new salesperson by name of Paul, and I'm going to add that to the to the pivot table data. This salesperson, Paul, has only one record selling book sets, but you'll see that uh, the units sold are 4,000. Let's bump that up to 5,000. So that's now the, the maximum. And when I come back to my pivot table and refresh it, you'll see that the new salesperson is added into the pivot table with the unit sold, but the conditional formatting remains on the previously formatted item. This is because the conditional formatting doesn't follow the structure of the pivot table. So now we're going to take a look at how to make sure that this happens even if new items are entered into the pivot table. So here we are again with the same data on screen. I've retraced my steps, so I've removed the conditional formatting from the pivot table. And now we're going to take a look at how to apply conditional formatting to the underlying structure of the pivot table for that particular field. So what we got to, there are many different ways of doing this. Uh, one of the easiest ways is simply to keep your cursor in one cell of the field that you want to format and then you go to the conditional formatting button on the home tab. Uh, and I'm going to select top bottom rules because I want to highlight the maximum of that field. And when I click on top bottom rules, I can click on top 10 items. And I'm going to say top one item. I'm also going to select a custom format and I'm going to select lime green and click OK. Now the moment I do that to a single cell, I'll get a little icon here, which is telling me that you're applying it to a cell within a pivot table. So you've got to do an extra step to anchor it to the structure. So I'll click that little icon there. There's a drop down and it, it's asking me, do I want to apply it to the selected cells, which would be the default if I did not do anything or do I want to apply it to all cells showing unit sold values or do I want to apply it to the unit sold for salesperson? And that's the one I want. So I'm going to click that. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the conditional formatting has now moved to correctly identify the maximum. Now let's take a look at how it changes if we change our data. So here I'm going to change Alex's once again to 2198 and I'll refresh my pivot table and you can see that the, the conditional formatting has moved to Alex. Now just as before, let's add some data to this pivot table and see if the conditional formatting includes the new data that is added. So as before, I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this data set and I'm going to include one row of data for Paul 
and uh, you can see that Paul has sold 5,000 units, so that should be the maximum. So let's go back to the pivot table and uh, refresh it. So here we go, I'm refreshing the pivot table, and as you can see, Paul's data has now been included in the pivot table, and it has been correctly highlighted as being the maximum of the group. So there's an easy way, that's an easy way to apply conditional formatting to the underlying structure of the pivot table. But as I told you before, there are more than one way of doing it. And let's take a look at one other method of doing the same thing. Now, another way to do that is to apply the conditional formatting to the pivot table structure right from the start. Let's uh, presume that we want to highlight all those that, have, that are above average from the sales revenue column. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my cursor on a single cell in the sales revenue column, and I'm going to the conditional formatting command, and within the conditional formatting command, this time, instead of clicking top bottom rules and then selecting above average, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the new rule button within conditional formatting. And as soon as I open new rule, here's, here are the options that allow me to make sure it is anchored to the pivot table and I'm going to say apply this rule to all cells showing sales revenue for salesperson. Next, I'm going to pick my rule and I'm going to say format only values that are above or below average and I'm going to select above average and all that is left to do now is to select a format. I'm going to pick amber, click OK, click OK again and you can see that all cells that are above average have now been highlighted. So just as before, let's take another test to make sure that new items get included in this conditional formatting. So once again, I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom of this list and I'm going to add a new row to this list. So I'm going to add a salesperson and I'm going to use the same item because we filtered it on book sets. Now let's scroll back up to this pivot table and refresh it and let's see if the conditional formatting now includes the new items that uh, come into the pivot table. So here we go, I'm going to refresh it. And as soon as I refresh it, you can see that uh, Peter now is the maximum, so that is highlighted. As well, you can see that Peter's sale being above average, that is highlighted as well. So that was another method of applying conditional formatting to the underlying structure of a pivot table. That's all from me in this video. I hope you found it useful and you found something in it that you can use. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now and don't forget to hit the like button if you liked what you saw in this video today.